Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Thick Man Takes Over Los Santos. If you enjoy this video, please lobby your nation's government to pass a new law whereby all pelicans will be considered sacred animals, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Also, I still have a cold, so to the person who commented on my last video saying I sounded like a dehydrated meth addict, f you. Nah, just kidding, that comment made me laugh, but okay. On with the literally sick video. Meet Agent 47, a retired hitman who is on a mission to become the most powerful crime lord in Los Santos, whilst also ensuring he stays sufficiently hydrated at all times. These are Du Bois, Stealtho Mato, and Crosby, and together the trio form a feared gang known as the Sons of Virgins. These are their stories. So I load up the game and spawn into my dark, dodgy, sad little apartment, which is weird as I recently purchased a much nicer place in the city. I actually like it this way though, as it reminds me of where I came from. It's even got some family photos on this cabinet, and honestly, there's nothing more important than family. I mean, these photos clearly aren't of my family, which is borderline psychotic, but there's people out there buying Bella Delphine's bottled bath water, so if Thick Man wants to pretend he's part of an African-American family, welcome compared to buying some Thoughts bathwater, that's actually relatively normal. Anyway, before we get busy growing our financial empire, we must first do something much bigger than money. Today is all about cleansing Los Santos on a scale never seen before. We must rid this city of as much NPC filth as humanly possible. For those of you who haven't been watching my videos, we recently discovered that NPCs, which are the bots you see mindlessly walking around the gaming world, are actually pure evil and really toxic. So I gathered a small private army of some of the bravest and most hydrated individuals I could find and we organized to meet at the Santa Monica Pier so I could brief them for today's mission. I asked them if they could dress in some sort of military outfit and I'm really glad to see they listened to me. I tell them the objective for today is simple. We must commit NPC genocide and I issue a shoot to kill order. I then do what all good leaders do before a ruthless battle. I take a pre mass murder selfie for mum because she really appreciates it when I send her photos of what I've been up to. We then roll out and commence phase one of Operation NPC Genocide. But don't worry, this isn't like the evil kind of genocide that leaves a dark blemish on humanity forever. This is the fun, family-friendly kind of genocide, like the bring your kids along to work day kind of genocide. And so it begins. The air support is already doing absolute work mowing down civilians as I lead the infantry charge up the pier, but then a burned out helicopter helicopter cabin wipes me the f*** out. As you can see, friendly fire is quite an issue, but as long as NPCs are dying, we will keep on fighting. We rid the pier of civilians, and the NPCs react by sending in the first wave of police officers. As I've said before, I have strong reason to believe Rockstar is enslaving Venezuelan children and forcing them to play as NPCs in their various video games. So every time we shoot a cop in Grand Theft Auto, we are likely also indirectly shooting a Venezuelan child. Apparently, when these children's NPC characters die in-game, they are free to go in real life, so we are not only cleansing Los Santos of NPCs, we are also literally freeing child slaves. Basically, we are bloody heroes. More waves of police are sent in, and we do our best to hold the pier. I can't believe there was a time when I stood up for these NPC scumbags, but the lads continue to fight valiantly, and I honestly couldn't be prouder. Many lives were lost, many people had to leave the battle early to go and eat some dinner or go to bed because of the time zones. But we kept firing our idealistic weapons for as long as we could. Imagine a city without NPCs. Imagine the freedom of walking the empty streets and breathing in that fresh, bot-free air. I realise that there is simply too many of them though, and with their quite frankly cheap infinite respawn hacks and Venezuela having a population of like 32 million, I know it's time to move on. We have done what we can here in Los Santos, and it's now time to head out to the country side to regroup and resupply before we commence phase two. I steal one of the armored trucks and tell the lads it's time to get the hell out of here. Now I never knew that driving an armored truck while a guy in heavy ballistics wielding a minigun shoots everyone from my roof was on my GTA bucket list, but I'm glad to have crossed that one off. We arrive at the airport and one of the lads has already secured us a big ass plane to escape in. What a legend. We begin to take off, but unfortunately a few brave men were left behind on the runway with the hundreds
hundreds of cops who followed us there. But our motto is, you never leave a man behind. Unless going back to rescue them is even a slight inconvenience, so sorry lads, good luck and goodbye. I go into first person in the plane's cabin to have a look around, and one of the soldiers is wearing a unicorn mask. But not the cute kind of unicorn, rather the kind that would enter your room while you were sleeping, and f*** you. That's right, it would freak you. Freak you right out. I probably shouldn't have censored the word freak the first time around, as it made it sound like the unicorn was a damn sex offender. How ridiculous. Oh, and hey look, the lads we heartlessly left behind managed to escape as well, so good work there. Unfortunately, I've already texted both of their girlfriends asking if they wanted to have an orgy with me and the unicorn because I honestly thought they were both dead, but that's a problem for later. We managed to lose the cops and land the plane at a country airport. The battle might be over, but the war has only just begun. It looks like almost everyone made it too, which is good enough for me, so it's time to head to ammunition and buy some weapons that are a bit more quiet. There's so bloody many of us, it's lucky I purchased that big truck which holds eight people last episode, and so I call my mechanic to come and deliver it. I asked you guys to suggest names for this vehicle last time, and an honourable mention goes to A1 Hero Dude for suggesting the BBC, the big black car. But I decided decided to go with Aiden Brandt's suggestion for the hydration station wagon. Good work mate, your prize is all the tap water you can drink. We arrive at ammunition, and of course one of the brave soldiers chose to fly a plane from the country airport to the gun store, naturally as you do. Anyway, I make the mistake of driving right under the plane's propellers, accidentally mincing everyone who was holding on to the outside of the hydration station wagon. So yeah, that's uh, that's my bad lads. This results in many of us getting wanted levels and so we decide the best way to solve this problem is a mass suicide pact. See, when you die, you lose your wanted level and don't have to pay, so it's a cost-effective way of becoming a free man. This also works in real life, but not nearly as well, as you don't respawn in real life. So I head into the gun store and buy myself the most appropriate silent weapon I can find a battle axe. All the lads get themselves a sturdy melee weapon as well, and we roll out. See, phase two of NPC genocide is using our melee weapons to eradicate the locals of this sleepy old town called Sandy Shores. I really wanted to play the DMX song, X Gone Give It To Ya, but I tested it out earlier and it got flagged straight away for copyright, but could you imagine how badass this shot would have been with that song playing? Instead, you get to hear me talking about that song, which is almost just as good. So phase two is is a lot easier than phase one. See, the population of Sandy Shores is pretty low, so we are able to mob the local residents while they are alone and isolated. How noble of us. In fact, we are murdering each other just as much as we are the NPCs. It's absolute chaos, but it's beautiful chaos. There's something so charming about putting away the guns and just pulling a local out of their car and then watching on as the mob pummels them. Mob mentality is portrayed as such a negative thing by the media, but this is actually just really, really nice. The cops eventually catch on and we realize our work here is done and that it's time to move on to phase three of Operation NPC Genocide, becoming Somali pirates. I love how truly off the rails this is. People on both sides are just being hacked and run over left, right and center. One of the lads picks me up in a soccer mum van and we head for the water. The plan is to use this old tugboat to escape to international waters. Technically, this is an inland lake and quite clearly that would mean that the entirety of this body of water is part of the United States, but let's just hope the local law enforcement isn't aware of, I guess, the basic concept of lakes. We get ready to set sail. Clearly this isn't a sailboat, but whatever the important thing is, we are now Somali pirates. I once watched a video about Somali pirates on YouTube, and then for the next six years, I swear to God, all YouTube did was recommend me these very similar videos of security guards fighting Somali pirates. Like, I'm not even mad though, they were pretty fascinating videos, and I hope the lads and I can be in one one day. I decide to take another photo for my mum. She'd be so proud of me right now. We cruise along doing pirate stuff like, you know, blowing up civilian boats. I guess we aren't really interested in stealing their stuff, we are more into simply striking fear into their little NPC hearts. So I think, yeah, by definition, that's literally just terrorism, but let's not overthink it. With phase three complete, I think it's safe to say Operation NPC genocide was a huge success. We might not have killed them all, but we definitely thinned them out a bit, and I decide to show my appreciation 
appreciation by throwing a party for the brave soldiers who assisted me. We proceed to drink and celebrate the epic victory royale. I even invite a stripper over, aka my ex-girlfriend Sapphire. I broke up with her because she gave Stealth Omato a lap dance, but we still have a great working relationship, aka she still dances for money. The party is pumping and today was a huge win, but I now have only one thing on my mind. The empire we have started building needs to grow faster and it's time to focus my energy back to becoming the kingpin of Los Santos. Like the great host I am, I drink way too much and proceed to pass out. <laughs> Today is a new day though, and so I speed over to my office block to check in and see how it's all going. I put hours and hours of blood, sweat, and semen into saving up for this impressive office block. Now, nah, just kidding, Rockstar gave it to me for free. I'm like a trust fund baby. I do sometimes forget that I accidentally paid $200,000 to rename my organization, a uh, organization. Not my proudest moment, but I'm super glad I'm reminded of it every time I walk into my office. I have this warehouse that I need to start stock up with stolen supplies and Stealth Omato agrees to help me with it. What a top bloke, but little does he know I'm going to take out my extremely overdue revenge on him for that time he got freaky with my ex-girlfriend stripper Sapphire. And needless to say, stealing the supplies for this was one of the least smooth missions I have ever been a part of. For some reason, as soon as Mato and I get together, the wheels really come off. Like I was just part of a near flawless genocide operation, but when it comes to stealing a combi with some medical supplies in it, apparently that's too difficult. Against all odds though, and in the face of diversity, we get the supplies back safely, but as you can see, we still have a lot of work to do to fill this warehouse up before I can make a sale. In addition to that, the lads and I really need to finish this mega bank heist we've been doing. We're almost two thirds done now. I also want to buy a nightclub so I can expand operations. I mean like, geez, we've got some work to do. But first, I need to extract revenge on Marto. First, I find a generic looking compact car. I then attach a sticky bomb to the inside of the door so that he won't suspect a thing. I then drive to Marto and say to him, Wow, dude, this car has this weird glitch. It's so funny. You've got to check it out. He believes me because he is an over-trusting Malacca. Rule one, never trust anyone, especially a shifty ass YouTuber. He climbs into the car. And if I slow this right down, you can see the moment he realizes it's a trap. He tries to pathetically clamber out of the vehicle, but your boy detonates the bomb and blows Mato back to GTA Vice City. This is a great start to my multi-tiered revenge, but I need to wait until Mato has something he truly cares about that I can then destroy like he did to me. And when he does, I'll be ready. Thanks for watching you legends, and another episode will be coming very soon. A huge thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel, and also these legends, many of whom were patrons for joining me on my NPC Rampage. Have a great week, otherwise until next time and as always, stay classy.